Hello, my friends, Jeanette here with Beeble Vintage Designs. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I painted this tulip. You can see I printed out an image. I took a pencil and scribbled on the back. Then I taped or clipped. I used a binder clip for this one. I clipped it to my watercolor paper, and then I traced the image that transfers the pencil onto your watercolor paper. And here I'm using a kneadable eraser to lighten up my lines because I'm going to keep this flower very light in color. So I don't want my pencil lines to show through. You can see the image is a little bit darker, but that's not how the picture was. That's just the way it printed out. So for this painting, I am using Arsh Hot Pressed 100% cotton watercolor paper, which is something I've not done before. I've used hot press paper, but for line drawings and some watercolor paintings, but not very many, just very small and loose watercolor paintings. And this tulip, I want to be detailed. So um, the difference between hot press paper and cold press paper is that cold pressed has a rougher texture to it. It's not as smooth as hot pressed. So when you use hot pressed uh, paper, you're able to achieve more details because again, the surface is smooth. So this is a first for me. I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but all in all for my first time, I think it turned out pretty well and I will definitely be using this paper again. Um, the colors that I decided to use are Quinn Red, Permanent Rose, Alizarin Crimson, lemon yellow, green gold, and olive green. I also did use a touch of opera rose and a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue as well. And the paints that I'm using are Windsor & Newton professional paints. And the brushes are my silver black velvet brushes in a variety of sizes. Now, unfortunately, um, I didn't realize that my camera died and I continued painting and wasn't able to capture the entire process of painting this tulip. But you can see that I did use the wet and wet technique and what that means is that I wet down the entire section that I want to paint and I'm doing one petal at a time and then I dropped in a little bit of color and I, I mapped out where the colors will be. And with watercolor painting, you, you do a layers of paint. So for my first layer, I kept it very, very light, just mapping out where my colors would be. And now here you see me using the um, wet on dry, which means that you're putting wet paint on dry paper. And once I apply the color on the petal, I'm using a clean, damp brush to soften the edge. So I run the brush across the edge of the paint that I just applied and the paint will blend with the water and soften the edge. And the reason I'm using the wet on dry technique is because I want to add the detail that I see in the um, my reference photo, the lines that I see that are more defined. But again, I do go back with a clean, damp brush and I do soften up the edges. So you can see that while the paint, the pink that I just added is still wet, I added a little bit of the lemon yellow at the base of this petal. Here you see me adding a little bit of pink and then I'm using the brush to drag down that paint and create the lines that you see in a tulip. Now I'm working on this petal and you can see that I've added my color and now I'm using a clean damp brush and running it along the side of that color that I just added and blending it through so I can get a nice soft edge and then I'm running the tip of the brush through the paint to create those lines in the petals.
And if those lines were a little too defined, you can see here I'm using a clean, damp brush to run across those lines and kind of soften them up a little bit. Because again, I wanted this to be a little bit more detailed than uh, normal, but I did not want it to stand out too much. I wanted it to be very light and soft. So you can see here, I've added more color to my petals. And now I'm using the wet and wet technique here to add a little bit more detail to that back petal. And you can see I'm using a clean damp brush to lift some of that color so that I can retain my highlights. So if I see that my colors are a little bit too dark, again I use a clean damp brush, I run it across the paint and I lift some of that color off. I found that using the wet and wet technique on the hot pressed paper is not exactly the same as it is on cold press paper. On cold press, I think the colors blend a lot easier. So this was challenging, but I think that I did pretty well for my first time, and I will definitely be painting more on the hot press paper. God knows I have tons of it, because anytime I see watercolor paper on sale, whether I think I need it or not, I buy it. And again, this is Arsh, and uh, it's one of my favorite papers. Here you can see I'm going back to the wet and wet technique. I've wet down the entire petal and now I want to add a little bit more color. So this flower was done using multiple layers. And now you see that I'm bringing that color across using the tip of my brush to create the lines that you see in the tulip petal. And if any of them are too defined or too harsh, I will blend them out. But because the paper is wet, still the color will blend into the water and give you those nice soft edges. And it's really important when you're trying to create a flower like this that you keep your highlights like you see in the center of that petal that I'm currently working on because that's what will make your paintings look more realistic. So if you find that you've gone over your highlights, you can always lift the paint by using a clean, damp brush, and you can even dab it with a paper towel, like you saw me do there, just to lift a little bit of extra color. You'll see me do that often. Here I'm using an eradicator brush to lift a little bit more of that paint. And the eradicator brushes are by Rosemary & Co. And I love these brushes for lifting watercolor paint. You can find them on their website. I don't have the links for them, but check them out. They were really inexpensive and they work beautifully. And uh, in the United States, it took me to about two weeks to receive them or maybe even less, but they're great little brushes. So here you see I've wet down the entire petal, but I'm only adding color to the center, center of the petal because I don't want it to go too far out to the edge of the petal because I need to maintain my highlights. So once I've applied it, I use a clean damp brush to keep it in the area where I want it. So I wipe away any excess and then I use the tip of the brush to draw that paint across the petal to create those lines. 
Now, I'm sorry I wasn't able to capture the entire painting for you, but I wanted to share this part of it with you. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions, you can always leave them in the comments. I'll get back to you. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It's a great way to show your support. It also lets YouTube know that you're enjoying my content. And I really do appreciate it. You can see here I'm adding a little bit of shadow. This is where I added a little bit of the ultramarine blue to my um, mix of pinks because I needed to add a little bit of extra shadow on that side. But it was just a touch. you got to be careful because it's a strong color. Well, we're getting to the end. Again, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.